Wow, it's weird to see someone in front of the camera. It's been a long time since I loaded. A really long time. It's been over two years. I'm finally doing another trip away, so I thought I'd just get out of the camera and start talking and document my journey, document the travels. So then, when I look back in sort of 50, 60 years, I can say I had a good time when I was, you know, in my 20s, bouncing around Europe. Anyway, I'm in Eindhoven in a minute. Eindhoven in the Netherlands and a three week trip. Starting in Eindhoven, Eindhoven, Cologne, Frankfurt. Nuremberg, Prague, and then trying to head towards Budapest. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens there, and we'll see where I end up. In terms of like why I haven't worked, uploaded in the last sort of two years, uh, various reasons that I'm not going to get into now. We'll see how this sort of three weeks goes in terms of filming starts changing. I'll probably update you over the next few weeks in terms of what's changed, what hasn't changed, what's going on with me in terms of life. I know obviously I document a lot of it on Instagram, but obviously producing longer form content is something that I really enjoy doing and I have really missed. Documenting my journey is so important, I believe it, because of where I'm trying to get to. There's another set of videos from me um, about my take on life, I suppose. Okay, good morning. I'm tired. I've forgotten how tiring hostels are. I've forgotten how tiring getting no sleep is. I've forgotten how tiring uh, staying in the same room with people is. So I am absolutely shattered. First whole day in Eindhoven, so obviously got here last night and then I was rudely interrupted by my camera dying. There's three things I've noticed being back in Netherlands. Last time I was in the Netherlands was, was probably 2018. Two or, three, two or three things that sort of s s um, stick out for me in, in the Netherlands. One, everyone cycles everywhere. Like, so many bicycles and you forget how active this country is. Number two, how flat everything is. Like obviously, um, I believe when Netherlands was formed, they uh, took back land from the sea. So yeah, everything, everything's so flat. There's like, there's no hills, it's so flat, so it's easy to walk around. And three, transport system seems so if efficient and like, even the roads they're built for pedestrians and public transport, they're not built for cars, which I find fascinating from the UK where, if you try and ride a bike anyway, you're probably gonna get, you're probably gonna die, or probably gonna get hit by something, um, if you're in a city centre, whatever. So, yeah, the infrastructure here is absolutely brilliant. To be honest, like, I was thinking about, thinking about this last night, like, I would love to live in Netherlands at some point. Like, maybe not here, because it's a bit quiet for me, but like, I definitely would, would be cool to live in uh, Amsterdam for, for a bit of my life, or a bit of time in the future, when that is, I don't know, but yeah, that'd be cool. But that's enough of me rambling. Uh, Philips Museum was actually quite interesting. I didn't know how big Philips actually was, obviously. I realised obviously it's a huge company, but I didn't realise on his background and stuff. And what I find fascinating about the museum is that the story it told in terms of Philips becoming the brand that it is today. And a lot of it is about, you know, I'm really into sort of business and entrepreneurship and, and self-development and Philips especially, like it's a lot of entrepreneurship today, today is, this is based, on a niche of a, an existing business. There's very few, if any, completely new businesses. Whereas Philips, when it was established in the late 1800s, that's a completely new business, completely, you know, electronics and technical stuff like that. That was all very new. They were, they were pioneers in what they were doing. And I, I find it fascinating how, how when we talk about entrepreneurship, that was pure entrepreneurship in, in terms of they didn't know what they were trying to create. They just had ideas. For example, they created, I think, one of the first x-rays. Now, you think what x-rays do now, like, they're used daily around the world, and I just found that absolutely fascinating that a company didn't set out to achieve that. And then they, you know, they, they then built a machine that's used in hospitals, or were one of the, one of the companies that mass-produced sort of an x-ray machine and, and made it how it is today, like, in terms of how the way it's used, etc. I also found it fascinating how they were involved in, obviously, the formation of PSV Eindhoven, which, in the city behind me, that is the Eindhoven Station. Uh, Eindhoven Station? Eindhoven Stadium. So, again, being part of a... being part of the journey of something that's, that's such a, you know, a big team, PSV Eindhoven. I'm not a huge football fan, but even I realised that PSV Eindhoven and and Ajax and maybe Feyenoord are probably the biggest clubs here here in the Netherlands. So just being a part of that. And then also they talked about how um, Philips' role in the music industry and artists with music, well, dance music, etc., festivals, buying. And they were part of the creation of Polydor Records. Now Polydor Records is a famous sort of music company that still exists today. So 
you know, this company's like over 100 years old and it's been a part of so many different sectors and they didn't realize it. So yeah, that, it was actually like, as, a, as someone who's interested in entrepreneurship and, and, and business, it's, it's, I didn't realize how big and what they'd actually achieved. So yeah, it was actually really good. Really great museum and definitely worth, worth coming and seeing if you're like, if you're ever in, in Eindhoven, really interesting. Then, it rained. So I went did all that and then went to have some lunch and then it rained. I've just been hiding out in a Mackey's like the last couple of hours but now it's now dry and I'm heading, so I'm just past the Phillips Stadium, I'm heading to like the northeast bit of the city, technological hub. I can't remember the name of it. When I get there, I'll tell you what the name of it is and uh, I'll, yeah, show you around. It's quite interesting. I went on, I googled best things to do if you've got two or three days in Eindhoven and this was the areas they say you should visit and I'll explain why when I get there. So it's probably about sort of a five, seven minute walk and I'll get there, I'll tell you what the name of, it, of the area is and um, yeah, I'll explain sort of what the situation is. Okay, so we're at a place called Strip S. I'm gonna just show you on the phone now. So that's the name of the area. So basically, when I googled where to go in Eindhoven when you're here for a few days, it comes to this area. So this area, it's called the Strip S District. It used to be the Phoenix Factory and Industrial Park. Um, basically you have the old factory buildings and now it's like a trendy area and like a hub for creatives and um, they say it's a place like no other and then you've got like loads of independent businesses around here so probably the buildings are quite unique so we've got like that apartment building over there I think it's an apartment building so I'm just, just going to turn the screen now oh, over there it's like an, it's, it's only like 10 minute walk from the city the main sort of centre area and basically yeah like I said it's a sort of creative hub and as a obviously filming this is me uh, get exploring my creative side there's no better place to be if you're filming in a sort of creative area so let's go and have a walk if there's anything interesting i'll film it right so just like i'm gonna walk around and it's probably the best way to describe this area is like um Baltic triangle Liverpool, maybe like northern quarter in manchester or like maybe shoreditch in london it's, it's that sort of vibe like edgy hipster nothing like what i am but no, it's quite interesting the way they've sort of they've built all these they've got like these shops behind me so they've built, like, built all these shops into like i think like an old factory building but it seems very quiet. Um, but I suppose it is a, a Tuesday afternoon. But yeah, the way they've done it's quite interesting. So I think it's got like, I think, yeah, it's got so much potential, just obviously a bit quiet. But yeah, it's quite cool what they've done to try, try and like change or I suppose keep the history in terms of like, I suppose the manufacturing that was here um, and obviously keep the building and obviously repurpose it as sort of shops, etc. And in fact, if you look up there, I don't know if you can see that, you can see sort of the Phillips logo and the Phillips like clock up there. Same Phillips, I presume. I presume that's the old Phillips factory, I'm gonna presume. Because I know they've moved most of their sort of, I know they had offices in Amsterdam, uh, Amsterdam now, or the Netherlands had offices in Amsterdam. So, yeah, could be, could be that sort of the, either the old home or the current home, but you know it's part of Phillips. Morning, or should I say afternoon. Welcome to Den Bosch. It's like one o'clock now. Day trip to Den Bosch. You just have a look around. Uh, it's quite a nice place, so why not? Um, it's only about 20 minutes from Eindhoven, so just jump on the train and uh, quick. Do you know what I love as well? I said this, I think, yesterday. It's like the efficiency of the transport system in Netherlands. Like, they, they have two tier trains and it's just just genius isn't it you know more people less cramped you know it's not the northern rail into manchester on a monday morning it's just just nicer experience anyway in terms of last night i can't remember what i got to last night uh went for dinner at vapiano just like I like garlic bread and black pepper cheese and chicken alfredo and then had a zoo meeting uh, last night and that was it then yeah we died this morning again i'm not can't seem to get used to hostels again you just forget how you're almost like you're like a zombie you just don't have proper sleeps it's the whole people coming in and out people waking up at like stupid o'clock at like 5 a.m and like got my eye mask on don't wear don't can't wear earplugs just fall out so you just you just have to like groom and bear and but anyway that is that is life that is i suppose the the downside of hostels right anyway let's go and explore den bosch and yeah, see what I get up to. Basically, I walked, I was in 
Den Bosch, like town centre, city centre. I uh, walked about three, three and a half kilometres east, and now I'm at a place called Oosterplaz, which is basically like a massive lake, which you can just see over my, over my shoulder. Got people in boats. And just around the corner there, oh, there, there, there we go. Just around the corner is like a beach. So I went there, I had a look, I had a sit down. I was tempted to dip my feet in, but uh, I don't have any, uh, don't have a towel on me, unfortunately. So there was no dipping my feet in and there was no swimming. So a uh, bit of an error on my part, but yeah, it's been a really nice walk. It's quite far, what, it's like 20, 25 minutes, half an hour, probably from the city centre. Um, but sun's out, podcast in my ears. It's a beautiful day, so yeah, not really complaining much. So, yeah, gonna head back into Centre now. Gonna go get some lunch, a late lunch, it's like three o'clock now. So, yeah, and then just gonna I think just chill for a bit. I'm a bit tired, and yeah, right, let's head back, back to Den Bosch Centre. Uh, had so back in like the centre now and uh, had like a nice little lunch at a place called Toasty and Burger. Had the club sandwich, which was unreal. The they had like a special sauce, which I wish I'd taken a photo, I wish I'd taken like a video or photograph of, but yeah, this the toasty and the sauce that was so nice. It's been a good day. I definitely prefer here to Eindhoven. Like Eindhoven, you could just literally be that could easily be like a town centre in like the UK, whereas here, like, there is actually some characters to stuff and. Yeah, it's, it feels like I'm in Netherlands. It's like, yeah, bits of here remind me of like, it's like these buildings behind me, or these. These all remind me of being in Amsterdam. Um, and obviously the river as well, it reminds me of being in Amsterdam as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a cool place. I do like it and definitely prefer Den Bosch to, to, to Eindhoven. The other thing as well, though, is just how like, the, the lack of buildings that, like there's no skyscrapers there. Like there's no like really tall buildings. Even, I'm trying to think back to Amsterdam, there aren't like, many skyscrapers if I think and it's it's quite interesting like if the like the most you've got is like sort of three or four story like terrace houses almost which I find absolutely fascinating they haven't like built upwards um into the sky much um which I find you know maybe there's just not a demand or again maybe it's planning or whatever but uh, yeah it's it's interesting how you know you think if I go on normal Manchester Liverpool where they've built up Whereas here they just haven't, you know, they've, they've kept it all sort of similar, but which I find weirdly interesting being sort of in property now. Right, that's been more of a, a ramble about Den Bosch. Right, before we go, we head back to Eindhoven. There's a bakery over there. It's probably the queue. It's a massive queue outside it. And the baker's called Jan de Groot. Horrendous pronunciation. Anyway, they do this thing, or pastry, I think it's called, called a bolshe bol. So, um, basically, it's... It's basically a chocolate, chocolate covered ball with like cream inside. So I don't know how well you can see that, but apparently it's meant to be amazingly nice. So I'm going to give it a try and tell you what I think. It looks very messy, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Right, so this is what we're doing. We've got chocolate layer, got like a, a, a baked, well it's not baked, but it's like probably a sweet bread and then like cream on the inside. So let's give it a go. That is amazing. I think I like cream on my nose, but I don't really care. Absolutely amazing. So so nice. Wow. Unreal. Quite out of here. Den Bosch. Den Bosch done. Hung all day. Yeah, definitely prefer it. Sign over. It's got more about it. More character. Busy. Busier. Okay, so we're back in Eindhoven now, and we're at the NH Collection Hotel. And basically, it's recently opened, and they basically built a sky bar on the 13th floor. So, um, I'm gonna go and have a gander, go and have a look, and um, yeah, see see what the view's like. As you guys know from t two, three years ago, uh, you like a good view. So, let's go and have a look and see what it's about. Right, I'm gonna wrap this frog up here. Eindhoven, done and dusted. Next stop is Cologne. I'm gonna exit with the Skyliner, but yeah. Catch up with you maybe tomorrow. Well, probably, probably in the next video. I haven't really decided I'm gonna string the song, but yeah. Catch up with you guys tomorrow. Over and out.